Hello and welcome back to Playbook for Podcasting. I'm your host, Cade Largent. I'm John Largent. And today we're going to be talking about building an engaged audience. Uh, this is something that's going to be really important for anyone that wants to do their podcast long term. And just making sure that your audience is ready and wanting to hear get that next episode is super important. So that's what we're going to get into today. Yeah, and the term engagement means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some some people, engagement means buying their product, buying their service. For some, it means uh, joining their membership group. For others, it just means uh, subscribing to the podcast and, and connecting through social media. So whatever your definition of engagement is, I think it's important for you to understand what that is before you start the process of trying to create that connection what to what end do you want that connection to uh, uh to include and so uh knowing that going in is important yeah for sure um and i think the number one way to make sure that you're getting an engaged audience is to consistently post uh, and we've talked about this in previous episodes and it's kind of the same across all platforms as far as social media goes as far as you know youtube or uh you know, any kind of content that you're putting out, you want to make sure that people know that something else is coming after it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So I, being an old man, I can tell you why that's so important. I know as a kid and I'm, you know, I'm in my fifties now, but this was stuff that I was doing when I was 12 and 13. I knew that at 8 a.m. Bugs Bunny was on every Saturday. I knew at that time, if it wasn't, something was wrong. And sometimes it was a special report on some kind of political stuff. Sometimes it may be a special event that was happening in the area. But I got ticked off when Bugs wasn't on my screen at 8 o'clock in the morning with my bowl of cereal sitting there waiting. And so that mindset still applies to your consistency. And what I mean by that is when you create a podcast – I think that it's important to have a release date and time that is consistent every week. And the reason why I say that is because it, and this isn't just in theory. This is in, you know, in practical life experiences uh, that we've done. Uh, when we've done podcasts in the past uh, with other clients and other things that we've curated ourselves, we set the expectation that at Tuesday at 7 p.m., a new episode is going to drop. And I can tell you many times from many experiences that when it's 7.05 and for some reason that episode has not dropped, we start getting social media uh, comments. We start getting uh, emails. We, mm -hmm. we start getting What's going on? Where's the podcast? Because you've set that expectation, and I think that consistency goes along with that. They may not even listen to it right then, but they know it's there because they've subscribed, and the expectation is when I get ready to go to work tomorrow morning, that's my normal you know, Wednesday morning um, content that I'm going to consume is your podcast, and when I don't see it there, I'm concerned. So that consistency is so, so important. And it just sets you as a professional who is going to live up to the expectations and has your listener in mind when they when you set that expectation because you're not just doing it for yourself. They're waiting and they're they're paying attention and uh it's uh it's embarrassing sometimes when it happens. And it does happen for for whatever reason. You just don't want to make it the norm, and uh, and then you can actually, uh, and we've done this before. We've the following week we've apologized to the uh, the listening audience. Hey, sorry about last week's late release. We had this going on, and just tell them the truth, and uh, that regains their credibility because now they're like, mm, is this show going to be around in six weeks? Because they can just swipe and you can disappear forever if they don't think you're going to have the uh, longevity and consistency to stick around. For sure. Yeah, I think that's very true. And definitely that consistency is something that I see even with like the, the channels I subscribe to on YouTube. I know when they're coming out every week. Um, and so I definitely look forward to that. And even if you think that, oh, no one really cares, they do. People People, it's weird what people get attached to, and your show will be one of them if, if it's uh, something that you stick with. 
Yeah, and, um, and the, the cool thing about that, too, is that they will let you know, and, you know, that's something that you share with a, a friend. You know, if, if I'm supposed to come pick you up for a ride, and I tell you 1030, and I show up at 11, you're going to bust my chops. Hey, man, you said 1030, what's going on? And so you have that intimate relationship with your listener that, okay, you're a friend. I've let you into my life. I've let you into my daily routine. Don't let me down, man, or I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's kind of transitions into my next uh, point, which is know your audience and know uh, who you're speaking to and what they want to hear because that's going to really decide how engaged they are and how much they want to hear from you. Yeah, I, you know, it's 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 super important to understand that your audience wants the authentic version of you. They don't want you to, you know, coattail on the latest trends or the latest fads or the latest cultural things that are going on out there if it doesn't jive with, with your audience. And, and so they know when you're bullshitting them. They know when you're trying to, um, you know, signal certain things and uh, when you kind of break your, your, uh, your previous persona to try to do something else, uh, they're like, oh, okay, this guy's trying to sell me something. This guy is trying to... Uh, promote something that's not consistent with this show and so we're gonna kind of take a step back because we're not sure this guy's really who he says he is or she says she is and uh and so it 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 does matter that that you know your audience and you know what cares about what they care about and that you that you i don't even want to say cater to them but just give them the straight up information that they're looking for and then they can make their own judgment if they find value in it or not. But when you when you start feeding them things that seem contrived or don't seem genuine, that's when you run into problems with your podcast audience. And and I've seen that um, recently. And and I've met this guy, a super super nice guy, uh, but Kevin Smith, who uh, you know who's done movies and produced movies. And um, I met him at a podcast event several years ago, but he, he did something with the DC universe that ticked some people off. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was very inconsistent with his, uh, with his previous content that he had created. And there was a whole backlash about it because it's like, yeah, you're just trying to get us to go to this movie or you're just trying to drive us a certain way. And, and that's not what the show has been about. So, you know, are you on the take? Are you, are you getting, uh, you know, getting, getting paid money to, to, to drive this large audience to this? So, and people call BS on it all the time. So, yeah, know your audience. Well, and here's the thing to remember. If you're not sure, just ask. Like, people, people think that there's, like, some great barrier between the podcast hosts and the audience. And the truth is, if you have an audience that wants to listen – all you have to do is ask them, hey, what are you guys interested in listening to? You can do a poll. You can do – it could be on your Instagram. It could be on your Facebook. However you want to reach out to them, just ask them. And then you can build your content going forward around that, and then you know that they're getting what they want. And now you don't have to think of something completely new because they've already told you what they want to, what they want to hear. So that's one thing to keep in mind is they will tell you what they want. It doesn't have to be a guessing game. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so that's, you know, it's important to engage your community like that. Um, but another thing is just uh, making sure that you're taking those feedback and those suggestions and running with them and uh, evolving your uh, content around what people want to hear. Uh, because, you know, things change and where you start your podcast won't always be where it ends as far as content. And so um, you see it with YouTubers all the time where you know, they start in one niche and then, you know, they kind of expand and then they blow up because they tried something new. And then now that's where their, their channel goes. That's the, that's the direction that they took it in because that's what people wanted to hear. And so sometimes trying new things and finding more or different audience is uh, going to benefit you in the long term. Yeah, I've seen more than one gamer that starts on a particular game, let's just say it's League of Legends or something. And then in one of their episodes, they, they talk about, movies or pop culture and they get this huge 
response to that episode because it was something that uh, a wide audience was listening to and then so they do more of that and then over time it evolves into a pop culture podcast and then they talk about league of legends every now and then uh, that happens all the time and that's okay mm-hmm. you're, you're 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 leading your audience uh in content that they want and as long as you're being um sincere about it and can create content that is interesting to them, whether that's bringing on a guest from, uh, you know, one of the comic book uh, uh, companies that does the illustrations or, or whatever it is, they're going to be really interested in that. And so uh, I've seen that dozens and dozens of times where one, one a show starts off one way and, and ends up in a completely different genre because it's kind of been driven that way by the audience. For sure. And on the whole audience interaction uh, topic, uh, you want to you want to facilitate your audience being able to interact with each other, um, whether that be on your social medias or what I see a lot of people do content creators specifically is they'll create discords, which uh, for those of you who don't know what discord is, it's just a it's an Internet uh, interaction like app, I would say room. Yeah, so it's like chat room, but also you can you can uh, get on calls together and play video games, or you can even yeah. share your screen, things like that. Um, but yeah, I noticed you Discords. were looking at me when you were like, uh, if you don't know what Discord is, um, I know what it is. I don't know how to use it, but I do know what it is. Yeah, but uh, basically you can just create your own Discord uh, server, basically. And so you can invite your audience members to that server, and then they can – they can discuss with each other um, amongst themselves, and everyone's already there for the same reason. And so you know that people are going to have the same interests. So can you go in there as a host and do a live chat, like, with your audience? Is yeah, that, for sure. Is that something that's possible? I could go in to, say, our, a pod, this podcast. We could, do a, we could do a Discord and actually uh, talk directly to our listeners and uh, answer questions and, and uh, you know, do some other yeah, for sure. There's, there. th- yeah. there's a lot of different options there. Um, and it's a great resource that's free uh, that can really, you know, bring people together and create a sense of community uh, within your listeners. That's really cool. Didn't didn't know that that was a thing. So, <laughs> yeah, get, I'm, I'm getting an education on, on our own podcast. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just trying to give everyone ideas uh, that could, you know, just set them apart and create that that uh, lasting community. Um And one other thing to consider, and it depends on where you want to take your podcast and what you have to offer, Uh, but for as far as giving like exclusive benefits and things, a lot of people do opt for doing the whole Patreon route, which is, it depends on what you do and, you know, what you can offer, but Patreon is a great way to offer exclusive content or whatever it is that you want to give people uh, at a rate that is decided by you. So for a couple bucks a month, you can have them subscribe to your Patreon. They'll get exclusive content. They'll be the first to hear the podcast if that's how you want to do it. Uh, anything like that that can really provide more value to them that they might be interested in. Yeah. And, and you know, there's other things that you can do too that um, doesn't necessarily involve – bringing in third party. I know, um, for example, some of our clients will uh, create a PDF that's like a checklist for whatever it is their industry is doing. And they say, you just come to our website and there's going to be a place to download this, uh, this checklist that's going to help you with whatever the situation is. And those are nice because you can put them up for a limited amount of time and you can drive traffic to your website then they may look around and then they may subscribe so it's a good way to uh, share what you're doing with the larger community and give them something of value for a limited time and it doesn't really cost anything uh, except for your time to create the pdf and to host it on that show on that uh, website so yeah there there are a lot of things that uh, you know a lot of shows that are more geocentric have meetups Mm -hmm. which are free, you know, and uh, a lot of those are are super successful. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, we, we've dabbled with uh, doing live podcasts uh, at a couple of theaters and over the years. And, and so those have, you know, those are 
those are nice because you can give exclusive offers. You could give a T-shirt away at those events. You could give away, um, you know, a, a backstage. If you if you work in a studio, you know, come in and be a part of the the recording. Uh, so there are a lot of really cool things you can do that uh, that are fun, that are low or no cost, that uh, will further, as we talked about earlier, engage your audience and give them extra. Or as they sure. say down in Louisiana, give them some lonyop. Lonyop <laughs> means a little bit extra. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just get creative um, and really just, you know, find your audience, find what they want to do, and give them what they want because that's going to keep people engaged and it's going to keep your podcast growing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's the majority of it. If you can follow those simple tips – Uh, And get creative and, you know, put your own spin on it. People want to hear from you. And so whatever you have to offer, give them that. Uh, And you should go pretty far. Yeah, and don't be afraid to take chances. I mean, this is your podcast. When you're you're creating your podcast, don't be afraid to try something different. If it doesn't work, just don't do it again. But... uh, but y- you know you've uh, we we did some podcasts one time where we were on the road and uh we did the whole podcast driving from uh San Antonio to uh Norman Oklahoma to uh, attend a uh, Oklahoma football game and then we interviewed people and just kind of did a you know a reality show uh and it got some great reviews but it was something we did once and we haven't done it again and uh but we wanted to try something different and uh and it actually worked out really well we had a uh, a, a company that sponsored that event and sponsored that podcast and uh not only uh you know spent money with us on that but also gave away a portable satellite dish to one of the U, uh, OU members uh, that we hung out with and uh, so it was a it was a fun thing and we got to give away this cool st- satellite system that they set up at their tailgate event and uh, it was a win-win for everybody so but it took us taking a chance is anybody going to listen to this is this going to be something that people will engage with and I can't tell you how many people when you come back we want to win the satellite next time, or or come hang out with our po- our, our tailgate. We you know we, we do things differently, and and we've got the best barbecue in Oklahoma or whatever it was. But uh, yep. yeah, there's lots of different ways to do that, and uh, I encourage you to take those chances and don't be afraid if uh, if it doesn't work out the way you want it to. Just uh, say hey, we tried something different, and uh, you know we may or may not do that again. For sure. Anything to differentiate yourself is a good thing. So just try things out. And, uh, you know, like we said in a a podcast episode before, it's not always about having the biggest audience. It's about having the most engaged. And so whatever you can do to get your your listeners to uh, pay attention and come back again, it's a good thing. So um, that's pretty much it for us. Yeah, have a great week. And uh, check out our website at playbookforpodcasting.com. We've got all of our latest episodes. Uh, We're adding video content. Our blog is there. You can subscribe to any one of your favorite uh, podcast platforms, and uh, that is where we we live. So uh, we look forward to having you visit our website. And uh, for John Largent. See y'all. Cade Largent, out. That was terrible. That was bad. (laughs) 